Okay, let's do this. Hello. Today we are going to celebrate the 40th video on my channel. And how are we going to do that? You say we're going to do it with uh, uh, a visual audio commentary to all of my videos that I made. So I'm going to sit here and talk through the entire playlist and we are going to be uh, I'm going to fix this little thing here and so we're going to sit and talk through the whole playlist and uh, I'm going to offer some anecdotes on the making of them, some easter eggs and uh, a bit of the production. So hopefully it will be enjoyable for someone at least. Uh, without any further ado, I'm going to switch on to the uh, little channel here and we're going to start with a playlist. Start here. This was the first video that I published on this channel. It was about the Songkran celebration in Thailand, which was cancelled in 2020 uh, due to the spreading of the virus. The film was shot in uh, 2019, uh, which was the last Songkran celebration Thailand had because it was cancelled in 2020 and in 2021. So this was the last one they had and um, uh, I was in uh, Phuket, this is from Phuket and I also was in Pattaya and we did uh, uh, whole days of, um, I think they normally have like three days, Songkran, uh, April 13, 14 and 15 and I did um, the uh, filming actually on the 13th because most places have the celebration in one day only because this kind of carnage, the kind of big water fights may be a bit too cumbersome for the locals in the end <laughs> even though they love it, they really really love Sun Crown and uh, uh, and they even start a little bit uh, early. Oh, we have some viewers here. Hello, we have Marie, Robert, and uh, uh, nice of you to join me on this little trip. Uh, let's see how long, <laughs> how long you're going to watch, uh, at least. So I did this uh, first video on uh, the song Cremon to celebrate uh, the memory of it and that that year there was not going to be a song crown and uh, we, uh, we basically had to look forward to better times where uh, we all could go celebrate again and i will return to song crown later in this uh, evening this one was from my first visit to thailand uh, my first visit to Thailand was in 2017. I was there with two friends, uh, a, a s s Swedish uh, Thai friend and her Swedish boyfriend. We were there for um, about 10 days. So we went for a full moon party uh, in Koh Phangan, just outside Koh Samui. And uh, we did uh, that was my first Songkran also. <laughs> we did the Songkran celebration in uh, Koh Samui. And I've obviously never seen anything like that before because it was uh, very crazy. This video was actually shot on the iPhone 6S Plus, I think it was called. It was one, it could do 24 frames a second, 30 frames a second, and in 4K. So. Even though I did not know about ever publishing it on YouTube back in 2017. Uh, oh, th this is actually GoPro Hero footage, uh, also from uh, the islands we went underwater. But e even though I, I did not have a plan of ever publishing these videos for something as public as YouTube, when I made them, they're basically more of uh, having a 
you know some holiday memories and uh, to look back to with uh, friends and family and that was how it started I, I did this a longer video of the, that trip as well as a longer video of a trip to Hua Hin and Phuket and uh, one longer trip in uh, let's see the beginning of 2019 and and those videos were longer and as I said made for friends and family foremost but then uh, obviously I, I was doing more traveling I was filming I, I did a lot of filming but I did not have a script for it I did not have a finished idea what I wanted to accomplish with it so what I did was that I, I filmed a lot of stuff and before I was going to publish it to something oh here we have something a very quiet little place a fish spa and everything flowers and all of a sudden uh, you see this what the where did that come from yeah so uh, actually uh, because i did not have a real plan what i was going to do with all this footage i had a lot of footage and then in uh, 2020 when the pandemic hit and obviously we wouldn't be much more traveling we maybe not seeing much of friends and family either i started to edit these things into smaller videos uh, to and put them on uh, this channel which now has 40 videos on them this was from Iceland what was my first trip there uh, did once again I did go with my Thai friend and her Swedish boyfriend and uh, we went to this is called uh, Blue Lagoon it's a volcanic spa hot springs I was really impressed by Iceland I think it's beautiful great nature awesome food i actually tried uh, a, a whale uh, eating wh whale beef and uh, iceland horse <laughs> so, so some really uh odd food maybe but they were really tasty i would love to go back there someday because it's such great nature i'd like to see more of it uh, my Thai friend, she was not so impressed by Iceland. She, she uh, compared it to going to the moon because it looked so like otherworldly. <laughs> but uh, but I, I really liked Iceland and I would really like to go back there uh, one day. Uh, there seems to be a, a, a crashed airplane on a black beach uh, about four hours drive from Reykjavik. Uh, I did not get a chance to go there on that trip but uh, if I go back I, I'd sure like to see it and uh, take some more pictures and make some more videos from there uh, the Iceland trip was filmed on the iPhone 8 uh, yeah I think it was 8 just 8 or did I do an 8s uh, I'm not sure uh, it, it, it was the uh, that one here now we're back in Thailand this is on my uh, second trip to Phuket and this was on a very particularly foggy day up in uh, Big Buddha uh, which is uh, basically in uh, the uh, well maybe not the middle of Phuket more like maybe s south of Phuket on a huge mountain there's uh, this very big Buddha statue overlooking the island and uh, it's a really uh, uh, nice thing to see it's because it's a very impressive building a very impressive construct and at this particular day we were struck by uh, foggy weather and uh, rain coming in which made it looks like a temple in the clouds even though it wasn't that high up but uh, it was uh, surely a uh, memorable sight of it and uh, also uh, this was a uh, time where we went to uh, something called uh, Hong Island 
uh, also known as uh, the James Bond Island, where they shot some of the exteriors of uh, the Bond film, The Man with the Golden Gun, as well as uh, the... Um, well, I guess they did templates of the islands, of the Thai islands around that area, which they later digitally composed into uh, uh, The Revenge of the Sith, uh, the third Star Wars film. And uh, this uh, islands, uh, the Thai archipelago, was going to stand in for the planet Kashyyyk, which is the homeworld of uh, Chewbacca and uh, Vukis. So, uh, yeah, that was... Uh, here is the uh, James Bond island, the, the little uh, island that's standing up like that. It's called the Needle, because uh, someone looks like a needle. And uh, on this beach, actually, we were hit by some kind of sandstorm. There came a big wind from the sea, and all these little grains of sand were like attacking you, and it felt like a thousand needles going into you. <laughs> it wasn't so pleasant. And it came very sudden, and then it was gone. So. It's also really a, a, a freakish, uh, <laughs> freakish nature at that time. Now we are uh, jumping ahead to uh, 2019's Midsummer 2019. Uh, Midsummer is uh, normally around the 24th of June, and in Sweden we celebrate it by. Uh, dressing up in uh, maybe folk clothing, traditional clothing. The, the woman in red here is Evona. Uh, she's an old colleague of mine from work. And later she moved with her family to Spain and uh, started an event uh, company. So if you ever are in Spain and need an event, then you should contact them. They're called Epic Events, so they are surely producing some Epic Events for you if you like that. Uh, anyway, uh, there are a lot of Swedish people living in Spain, and all of them, uh, of course, want to celebrate Midsummer, like this. It's uh, this phallic-looking uh, tree, which we all dance around. It's a very... Uh, <laughs> A hidden tradition, I suppose, and uh, you dance around this, and uh, basically you're dancing in the summer. There is a horror film called Midsummer, Midsummer, uh, which, okay. uh, to some um, uh, extent, shows these um, celebrations. But since it's a horror film, it takes them. <laughs> It takes them a bit to the extreme, so I wouldn't watch Midsummer uh, and think of it as a documentary. It's a more of a fun, uh, entertaining, but it shows uh, some of the old traditions at least, and uh, and some like this. And uh, Sweden uh, is very traditional when it comes to Midsummer. You always are supposed to have a big lunch outside with schnapps and uh, midsummer food and as you may know uh, there's always rains <laughs> often rains in Swedish summer so even if there's a rainy day uh, we are going uh, to sit outside and uh, have the Swedish uh, midsummer lunch <laughs> so. uh, this is one of my favorite cities uh, to visit it's London and uh, I've been. Oh, hi! Here we have some comment from one of yours, Robert Fencello. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm happy you're enjoying my videos. The London vibe, it's uh, cer certainly something special. Uh, it's when I traveled most to London, I could go there maybe six times a year, and I have both Swedish and uh, British friends there. and. Uh, it's always a great time. I try to go there for a long weekend or, or something and uh, it's um, a great city because there's so many restaurants, so many streets to walk at uh, and this in particular, this is the 50 Berkeley Square 
which is supposed to be the most haunted house in London. It's uh, it's now some kind of library. There is some company that I think they're doing. Um, maybe it's not a library. It's more like they're furnishing old books and, and something like that. So, so it's uh, it's not people living there, but the people working there during the days. Uh, I have no idea if they have been plagued by any of the uh, paranormal activities, though. Uh, who knows? Uh, I'd sure like to go in there sometime. Uh, I've passed by many times and go up and take pictures of it. And sometimes the door has been open and people have been going in and out. But uh, uh, who knows? Uh, on my next trip, maybe, I'll, I'll try to sneak in and, and get a little peek. Or, or maybe I can go on a... Um, tour inside and, and, and see some more of, of the um, supposedly haunted, m supposedly most haunted building in London. And well, now London has uh, been uh, had a lockdown for quite some time. Uh, I guess all of the world is starting to open up now as we speak in the end of May. and. Um, I look forward to go back there. Uh, as I said, I've got plenty of friends there that I miss and uh, would surely like to see again soon. And just outside London, we have uh, this old cemetery called Highgate Cemetery. Uh, it's really huge one there are uh, it consists of two uh, uh, different parts of the cemetery <coughs> and but when I visited there there had been a huge flood flooding coming in and th at that time it was basically that uh, one of the parts the northern part was closed down due to the flooding so I, I could not uh, visit all of it, uh, even though uh, I, the part I visited, which I suppose is the south, south part of it, uh, there were plenty of old gravestones and uh, plenty of old things to see. And so if you fancy having a trip in a, um, in a calm and quiet uh, graveyard, and if you aren't superstitious about it or, or feel queasy in any kind, uh, I can really recommend it. And yes, of course, there are a lot of rumors about it being haunted. Uh, I think the weirdest one of them that I read was about the Highgate Vampire uh, that was supposed to be there. Uh, obviously, he was not confirmed, so I, I think you should take that with a grain of salt even though it makes up for, for a, a great video. Actually, this one, the uh, inserts with me with the umbrella was shot in summer 2020. Because it, the, this video in uh, London was shot in uh, 2019. And at that time, I had no idea about me doing videos or even being in front of the camera. But when I was editing this, I thought uh, maybe I should try to put myself in it somehow. So what I did was that I went out uh, on Leading her in the woods there and found a green uh, veg <laughs> green forest behind me. It was a, a somewhat cloudy and it had been somewhat rainy and I stood over the umbrella and then I cut out that and keyed in some digital rain in the background. So if you go back to that video and check it out even closer, uh, y you you may even notice the digital rain in the background, so I made it uh, look uh, as it <laughs> as I was in London with the umbrella. Uh, the grave the graveyard is in London, 2019. Me with the umbrella, uh, leading her outside Stockholm, 2020. And speaking of London, when I was there, uh, I had this really good uh, fruit punch called Pims. It's a gin-based, uh, well, basically a sangria. You put in this uh, with some 7-Up uh, or some fruit soda and some fruit. 
and you basically serve them it's really very refreshing very refreshing good for a sunny day and a hot day so if you are in a warmer country than sweden uh, i'm sure you you could uh, use this drink uh, even more frequently highly recommended pims i'm not sponsored by pims by the way but i sure <laughs> i sure love for them to sponsor me and send over a crate of pims maybe but and then, then i can make this uh, drink to my friends but uh, uh, maybe in the future who knows uh, highly recommended still uh, this was shot in my kitchen actually the kitchen where, I, where i'm sitting now so <laughs> maybe you recommend you can recognize the background there from uh, from where i'm sitting right now uh, this is from uh, uh, last summer in the area in which i live uh, maybe 10 minutes by foot from my apartment uh, there is an abandoned highway ramp it is known as uh, Spök på farten, which is the ghost road. However, there are no ghosts um, uh, connected to this place. It's more, uh, more of a name because it's a, well, a bit of a ghostly place and I suppose it's because it's abandoned. Uh, this was going to be the uh, highway ramp uh, leading up to the big highway. Which you can see there but uh, the plans changed during production of it so they opted to create a new highway ramp and just left this as it were they never finished it and uh, uh, so it stands there it's a place for um, uh, skateboarders for people like me who like some kind of light urban exploring going out and checking out odd places and uh, I did actually visit this later again in the winter in a later video, which we will come to uh, later tonight uh, w when we get there. Uh, but it's um, if if you are in Stockholm and if you are in Kungsholmen uh, near Lindhagens Plan, I can uh, recommend a trip to this during the summer because it's now you can see it. Now you can see that it is a road. In the winter it just looks like a snowy field, so it's a bit of an anticlimax. But in, in the summertime, I, it's well worth seeking out. So, so you, you can get a little extra uh, peek into um, the hidden Stockholm, which uh, may not uh, so many know about. But it's... Um, uh, it's a very uh, nice place to hang out in. Uh, it was when I did this. It was also a sort of a training for me because I think this was the first one where I used my Sony A7 III together with a gimbal. I think I used the Ronin SC. It's called a small gimbal, which basically is a Steadicam. You hold it, you put the camera on it, and then you can walk around, and, and the camera is always fluent. Uh, which um, uh, makes for some great panning shots as we see there and uh, uh, time lapses where you suddenly zoom into an object or walk around an object so it was a little bit of, of a training ground for me as well now we're back in 2019 on my uh, second trip to Hua Hin which is in uh, the middle of Thailand, uh, well, South Thailand, but after Bangkok. It's between Bangkok and Phuket, uh, more or less. It's uh, about a, well, two and a half, three hour drive from Bangkok. And uh, it has a great variety of uh, things to see there, and some I put in here. When I do these trips uh, actually w when I do the editing of these trips I had a lot of footage from them and what I try to do is that I make first I make a video like this one called Hua Hin simply Hua Hin where I combine different elements of my trip into that particular smaller video it's like a little almost like a little trailer for things to come 
uh, because we will gonna visit these places, these temples, the vineyards, uh, the train station, as you can see now. We're gonna visit them in separate videos later on, where, where you can see more about them and uh, also learn more about the uh, uh, places that we see. So this one called just simply Huahin is uh, more of a tease, teaser trailer for, for, the, for the upcoming videos. And uh, I, uh, that was something I, I found that um, concept uh, uh, working and it was good. It was easy for me to uh, uh, sort of market and uh, with a clear message to the viewers that, okay, now you see this is like a, a little collection of uh, views from, uh, from this place. And then we're going to delve deeper into it, if, if you like. And uh, here I'm trying to put a coin into the elephant, but failing miserably. <laughs> yeah, jokes on me on that one. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, that kind of concept on how to make a lot of vi uh, video filming during a, a holiday and later combining it into one uh, trailer for it and then delve deeper into it. I, something that I've been doing for other places later. I had this small, well, you can say that I did it for London because I had one for London and then I had the Highgate Cemetery. But London was more like a feeling for the city. Uh, Huahin, here is a pure uh, teaser for upcoming videos and uh, as well as uh, a little enjoyable film in its own. And I will do the same for later for uh, Paquette and uh, I also have in Spain. This was also the first one where I had a little post credit sting. Uh, it's like the Marvel Marvel films. Of, after, the, after the credits uh, for me and all the YouTube uh, end, end cards, I had a little thing where she uh, gongs the gong gong uh, as a little signing off from that video uh, and because she, she looked very happy doing it <laughs> so. here is the uh, Huahin uh, railway station uh, it's an ancient uh, well not ancient but a quite old uh, construction and uh, it uh, combines for the southern line as the rail big railway so Thailand pass through here so even though it's been around for a while, it's uh, one of the um, still one of the uh, landmarks in Hua Hin. So it's not only if you're traveling by train uh, you visit there; it's also if if you go there to see some of the um, uh, traditional architecture, not only the uh, train station but also this pavilion. Uh, which was uh, donated to Joachim in uh, the 1960s. And uh, as you can see, it, it has a traditional Thai architecture. And uh, yeah, it's uh, still one of the main attractions at the station because it gives you uh, a little view into um, the, the, the older older times, older architecture. Uh, I did actually ask one of the locals on how frequent the trains go there because uh, when I was there filming there was no train passing by and uh, I got this somewhat uh, cryptic response. Uh, train sometimes come, sometimes not. <laughs> Which is, <laughs> well, quite clear in itself, I guess. Now we're back in Stockholm last summer. Uh, here is something called Spökslottet, the ghost castle, which is one of the supposedly most haunted buildings in central Stockholm. Uh, now it uh, serves as a uh, part of, uh, I think, I'm not sure it's a library or something, it's part of. Uh, uh, well, it's actually named Spökslott now. It is part of Stockholm University. But there are no students there. It's more like for, uh, uh, I would suppose, at least some kind of administration. And uh, this video was, I think, the f one of the first ones I did using a uh, drone. 
the Mavic uh, Air, which was uh, released, yeah, about the same time last uh, last spring. So I did that with that, and as well as uh, the uh, gimbal and the Sony A7 III. Uh, all my current videos are made on the Sony, uh, even though the mobile phones get better and better by the day. It's still a real camera with some le real proper lenses are, are still uh, see, uh, still a good lens. You're doing that, and you, you can put filters on it. You can uh, you you actually you do get a better quality of it, uh, more filmic, uh, cinematic look on it. Especially if you go in 24 frames a second, which I do for. Uh, practically all my videos some of the videos from Thailand are in 60 frames per second I did that for for the Songkran video the first one we saw and also for two of the latest Songkran videos I also have it for uh, um, I did for Halloween and in uh, the Tiki bar uh, and some temples so, so actually when there are some more when there might be a lot of action in the image or if there are some uh, a, a lot of things happening uh, like Songkran for instance and I want to give myself a bigger freedom when editing I do it in 60 frames per second because if you film in 60 frames per second it's much easier to do go into slow motion and speed ramps in the editing and I, and I do that a lot when I have that footage I I try to use it as much as possible where if you do 24 frames per second yes you can speed it up but you cannot slow it down much you when you have 24 frames per second it will become very jerky uh, slow motion it was, the slow motion will not be nice if you do it from 24 so if you if you are going to do something in slow motion you better film it in uh, 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second 120 frames per second is said to be the kind of sweet spot for slow motion that's one we see most in commercials and in, um, in films well, when they go into uh, some, some real real uh, slow motion stuff now we're back in Hua Hin 2019 it's in a um, uh, RT art uh, art villa yeah, there are a lot of artists living uh, well not living but they're having their studios in this artist village and uh, it's really in, in, uh, you get ins inspiration by going there seeing all the painters they sit out there having open open uh, studios here you can see them working they're sitting there they're, say if you are uh, um, not a collector but if, if you are uh, if you like art or if you're artist yourself I think this would be a, a really nice place to stroll around in and uh, maybe talk to talk to the artists it's very it was a very peaceful place to walk in there, there was some soft music going on and uh, uh, they even have art classes you see you you can go there and you can teach or if you go there with your family if you have kids the kids can create their own art there and um, uh, it would make for a uh, a good day for the whole family I'd say so it's uh, yeah, an alternative to going to the beach when people think about Thailand there's always talk about going to the beach because that's what's mostly what you see you go people swimming and, uh, and and do that but th there's so much more to see it's not just temples and beaches around there is more and th there's coming more from Huayin also which uh, became a surprise for me because uh, you don't often uh, combine uh, Thailand and wine you don't think of Thailand as a wine country but they do have a brand called Monsoon Valley which is uh, they have got awards from it uh, for the wines in 
Germany and Japan. Yeah, they got some. Uh, so it's a really. Uh, it's, it's been an acknowledged vine uh, for wine lovers, uh, but we'll we come that come back to that later on in this. Well, actually, now <laughs> that video came sooner than I expected. Monsoon Valley Vineyard. It's uh, there are t uh, two vineyards, I think. One in Monsoon Valley and one further up uh, north. The climate, even in Thailand, even though all the Thailand is hot, I think is more hot down the south. And the production of wine uh, differs a lot, of course, from the one we have in Europe, because here in Thailand, the grapes uh, become uh, ripe uh, much sooner. They must have a whole different uh, production cycle of it. They need to be quick because the grapes, uh, <laughs> they don't want them to get too sweet. They need to harvest them in time. And uh, But as they say, I mean, the tropical nature of it uh, serves for an interesting uh, wine there because they got the monsoon rains, they got the dry earth. And um, in the places, as, uh, as I said, that the rainwater is the only source for the watering there because the vineyard is very far from any seas and also the sea has a lot of salt in them so maybe you don't want that and uh, the lakes in, around in the vineyard are uh, man-made and then they have uh, planted fish and uh, lobsters in those lakes for uh, their own restaurant uh, in the vineyard once again it's a interesting place to see especially if you like wine if you're uh, if you love wine uh, like i do <laughs> you uh, i cannot recommend this high, highly enough you if you go in hua hin you absolutely need to visit monsoon valley and if i didn't bring so much photo equipment with me i probably would have brought home <laughs> some bottles of wine but uh, there's a little thing also when you travel how much are you supposed to carry i mean i i bring uh, uh, I, I bring camera i bring a gimbal now i bring a drone a couple of lenses uh, some backpacks a bigger backpack for longer trips a smaller backpack for the everyday use and um, filters yeah it's it's so much in in the camera bag that's uh has to be uh, <laughs> has to be thought about and has to be carried around so uh, and i think the limit for going uh, abroad is, is usually around 23 kilos uh, well unless you pay more of course uh, so there's always there's always an option so you don't need to um yeah go empty-handed at least for that now we are going to a uh, more um, recently uh, uh, talked about video. Uh, this one was made last summer 2020. We was about going to an island just outside the Lidinge uh, called Storholmen, which for long had an abandoned uh, castle in that's called Villa Kasman. The village uh, villa itself it's been abandoned for quite some time i remember I've, I've read about it i've seen pictures i had thought about going there for quite some time also uh i think it's actually i'm thinking about maybe a couple of years ago i was thinking of going there and just for pictures uh but at the time i think it was in the winter time uh, i think there was some limited uh, uh, connections to the island with boats and so I couldn't, um, uh, well, if I had gone there, I'd been, sort of been stuck on the island for, for an unforeseeable time, it felt like. So I did not opt for that. 
Yes, but uh, now I, when I had the drone again, I, I have had my equipment, and uh, so last time I think, oh, maybe, I, may, maybe it's time now. Maybe I should go there. And uh, as I went there, uh, I uh, met with one of the previous owners, uh, at least someone who had lived there before, and. Um, she told me some of the ghost stories about this place uh, and uh, also uh, some of the history of it and uh, I did a lot of it and uh, also there's plenty of information to find on it online because uh, the villa had been uh, uh, rented by the Soviet Union embassy uh, during the Cold War I think so, <laughs> so. Uh, it, it had been uh, quite a bit of a, a drama around that place but now in media recent media in the spring uh, 2021 there have been a new owner and they were going to restore it to its kind of former glory and uh, probably do some conference work or have, have something there and when they were going to uh, start they found that one of <laughs> a previous owner is still inhabiting the grounds. Uh, the own, the person who is uh, occupying the building, he says it's uh, he has a, a um, agreement with a co-owner. There were there were two people owning this, and he says that he has an agreement on uh, uh, living there, yeah, that he can use he he can use the grounds, uh, but that's not uh, put in any contract now so the new owner obviously won't him out because he wants to go in there himself and uh, continue to work but now they have sort of got in a in a clinch they're not getting anywhere so i suppose there will be uh, some lawyers straightening this out of course but it will take time which of course uh, sucks for the new owner because he, he wants to get uh, get get going with with the production of uh, of this uh, uh, house because as you can see it's a really really nice house so if they make a hotel or uh, place for conference in it I absolutely want to go there and spend the night uh, even <laughs> with or without ghosts I'd like to go there uh, absolutely for sure so I, I hope they solve the situation that's in there now but since this has been a bit talked about I uh, a lot of people found this video and uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm grateful for that that the people have been watching it and uh, also was in, in contact uh, with someone who's with actually a few people who, who wanted to ask if they could use some of my drone shots in in their own productions and uh, and of course i mean uh, if uh, they, they can uh, feel that they can use some of the shots and, and make their own production better i'm more than happy to to help them out of course so uh, <laughs> yeah also it was one of the times where i was trying to learn some more drone flying and new uh, ways of handling it uh, so and uh, I, I was quite happy with this video, yeah, still is, and uh, it seems like uh, people who have been watching it uh, also, also like it, so that's nice. Now we're back in uh, Hua Hin again in uh, 2019, in a palace. Uh, which name I shouldn't even try to pronounce uh, because I would probably offend a lot of Thai people uh, but it's a it's a royal palace it was made for the king Rama IV I think who wanted this as a little summer resident by the sea um, this was also one of the videos. Every, all all the videos that I made in uh, in Thailand were shot in 60 frames per second, but this is on a 24 frames a second timeline, which also makes 
uh, it's more dreamlike so, so basically it's, it's everything is in uh, 80% no it's a uh, 40% uh, 40% uh, slow motion but since I use all the frames of it I can also use them when I'm doing some speed ramps or things so, so I don't it's not like I'm missing frames because if you put a 60 frame film uh, piece on a 24 frames a second you you're going to miss but every every third frame or something unless you stretch it out which makes the clips longer and also will make it in in like a, a slow motion takes but then also you, you get to use every frame of it and uh, as well as when going up in uh, the speed ramps as in this section of the video when we are going through the uh, uh, palace uh, corridors down to the sea uh, we are having some uh, speed ramps uh, among between the information texts and uh, the end credits. Also, uh, this is not all of the royal buildings, royal palaces are open in Thailand. Uh, this is actually one of them. So it was, uh, uh, I was fortunate to go there because uh, so it's nice to get a little glimpse in into another culture and, and the traditions as well as the uh, uh, the architecture uh, because I'm, as being someone who takes pictures I, I like architecture like seeing odd looking buildings or uh, some, some kind of impressive things here's actually one of the ones uh, film in 60 frames per second and also on a 60 frame timeline so if you have a quick enough internet and a quick enough computer and watch it on uh, YouTube you can see it in 4k 60 frames per second which is uh, my intention for this I'm not sure how it will look on this streaming uh, video I, I think it would probably be a bit choppier because uh, the uh, the sharing of the uh, browser may not be up to snuff with uh, with this mm. this is actually we, we had a little uh, uh, two different versions of this one uh, this beer bar it's a beer bar there's different kinds of bars in Thailand but this one is more uh, focused on selling beer and uh, they have pool table there this is a place where a lot of people go with their families and friends uh, to play uh, um, uh, pool and uh, enjoy uh, time together and uh, as you can see there is a, a lot of uh, the owner uh, Ni uh, she's actually a uh, the sister of a Thai friend in uh, Sweden and she has this bar uh, for um, uh, for some years now and uh, her kids were visiting there was some Thai holiday from school so so they were visiting and uh, obviously they they are not uh, drinking alcohol because well actually this the kid the, the her son he he, he was uh, too young to have alcohol the daughter was over 18 so she she uh, she could uh, drink legally if if she, if she chose to and um, karaoke it's a big thing in uh, Thai bars and uh, as you can see it's a it's a more family friendly bar as opposed to uh, other bars in Thailand which may not be as family friendly so to speak but uh, this one is family friendly so if you are in Hua Hin with your family uh, don't hesitate uh, go visit Ni's Tiki Club and uh, play free pool have great beer and uh, talk to the lovely staff. Now we are back in Sweden, in the suburbs, in uh, something in a graffiti park. Yeah, we were going there 
and uh, just I had just packed up all my equipment and started filming as a big rain, <laughs> big rainstorm uh, hit me. Uh, so I had to sit sit it out basically, and uh, as it uh, dried up, I could uh, quickly go in and uh, do my filming because I didn't know when it was going to rain again. <laughs> I did not want that. But uh, it's um, I think it's the Europe's uh, biggest uh, legal uh, graffiti place. So basically it's open for the public. So if you are a graffiti artist, uh, it's free to you, for you to go there and create your, your own graffiti wall. It's a big area and uh, they were going to shut down some parts of it close to an industrial area. Uh, because they, I think it was going to be part of a nature preserve, and uh, and also there was a fire there. I think in, uh, not sure if it was in late 2020. There was a fire there, so uh, I think I I hope uh, <laughs> the things you see here are still there. But I know there were some parts of it that's uh, that were damaged, damaged by the fire, unfortunately, because it's a it's a li it's a li little interesting place outside Stockholm. So uh, where is it? Bandhagen, close to Rågsved. So yeah, if you if you have uh, the means to get there, it's it's a, like I think it was like a twenty minute walk from the nearest uh, public communications so uh, going there by car is absolutely the way I would recommend it because uh, unless you fancy a long walk of course but um, this was also uh, using drone and uh, gimbal uh, I also get the question a lot, is this place haunted? Uh, no, <laughs> that one was not haunted. Uh, but is, that is a question that pops up, pops up uh, quite often on my videos, whether the place is haunted or not. Uh, just because something is abandoned or maybe a little, uh, you know, out there doesn't mean that it has some kind of uh, spooky vibes to it. <laughs> or paranormal activity either for that matter. Uh, there, um, I have never actually been susceptible to seeing uh, these uh, paranormal things. Uh, um, I, I, I'm a believer in that. I want to believe in it, but I have never seen anything. So I, I guess I have to wait until I do before I pass judgment. This was the only trip abroad in 2020 for obvious reasons then it was for spain and uh, it was a friend who had a birthday party who had invited a big group of people to go there and uh, uh, basically ha have, an, have a week of um, relax hang by the pool, great food, trips, and uh, enjoy life, basically, and uh, sangria. And, and uh, I've been to Puerto Banus uh, a couple of times before. It's uh, really uh, very uh, nice, some upper class place of Marbella. Uh, fancy boats, fancy houses, uh, but it, it is a place that I can recommend because it's very beautiful. As you can see, clear water, clear skies. Yeah, basically all the nature we don't have in Sweden. So, uh, but I, I know uh, 
many viewers of my channels are from the Philippines and of Thailand and I suppose you have a lot nicer weather in, in your countries than I do in Sweden uh, but uh, yeah a couple of hours away I can go to Spain <laughs> too if I want to see some sun and, and have some uh, hot nice climate uh, was old town I like that also again going to the thing that I enjoy about watching architecture going for long walks uh, absolutely one of these things is going in an old town and seeing those streets is uh, something I, I can do for hours basically uh, when I went to London as much as I did there for a period uh, I think it was uh, maybe like between 2010 to 2015 or something uh, I could go out and walk for an entire day and that was how I found out how London was put together because I was walking in the different parts of the city for different trips and then I could basically go through them and uh, see that oh yeah this is how this connects because it's so big so that actually you have to spend more time in one part of the city before you get to know that part in Stockholm you, you can walk around Stockholm in one day and uh, <laughs> it's not so big well I mean if you go delve deeper in, into the different islands of Stockholm yes of course that would take longer but not as long as London obviously so then <laughs> but the walking comes also with the cost if you travel abroad if I travel to uh, Thailand, for instance, or Spain, where there's a hot climate, uh, then you cannot really be walking for hours, especially if you're not if you're carrying a backpack with a lot of camera equipment. You, then you need some kind of shade or cooling off. So when I travel to Thailand, I I do go for, go for some shorter walks. Um, around if, if I go to a you know a, a trek or want to see something but then usually I, I rent a car I, I don't go if I if I went by motorcycle I'd probably be run over by a bus or, or some car in just a couple of minutes so for my own safety as well as others I, I rent a car when I go in Thailand <laughs> this was the um, uh, a trek up the mountains uh, it's called uh, Caminito del Rey uh, the devil's passage or something and uh, oh wow it's not for uh, someone who is afraid of heights no, I tell you that because the pathways are narrow and uh, as you walk there you well it is safe to walk there obviously because it's a tourist attraction even though f for uh, sometimes uh, explorers have been breaking in there and walking off the path and uh, fell to their death in certain places but for for us as going in a group uh, we keep um, to the pathways and uh, then it's not dangerous but you can still get the vertigo sensation if you look down or suddenly it's like like that because eh, you are high up in the mountains and uh, it's a long way down and you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to fall down and uh, also some great nature that day we, we had a very good weather it was it was so windy that it didn't become uh, too hot we, we, we could uh, be well, I think we did that trailing I think it was in like was it two hours or one and a half hour maybe uh, th the uh, tourist uh, information said it would take like uh, something like four hours or something so we were prepared for the worst but uh, no no it, it it, it 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 wasn't uh, so difficult at all so uh, also one of the little things i can uh, recommend from going 
This video was uh, filmed, uh, said uh, last, on the trip to Spain was, yeah, it was in September, uh, late of September 2020. And uh, this video in the uh, walking the track uh, was filmed on the iPhone XS Max, uh, 24 frames second and uh, this was the last video that was shot only using iPhone um, I did not bring the big camera equipment on on uh, this particular hike because uh, I did not know how uh, how uh, well actually how long the trip was going to be they said about four hours first but uh, uh, if it was going to be a lot of uphill, if it was going to be hot, I did not want to be carrying too much. So then I take, okay, was the, the camera we always bring with us, that, that's the camera in our phones. And, uh, well, picture-wise, I, I don't have much to complain about. Yes, it's filmed by a phone, but still, if I filmed it in uh, a flat format in Filmic Pro, which is the uh, camera app I use for all my, my uh, iPhone photography and uh, uh, oh no, iPhone videographers, not photos, video, vid the videos. Uh, so I film in a flat format and then I color grade in uh, Final Cut Pro. Uh, all these videos are edited in uh, Final Cut Pro, uh, which is the editing software of my choice. If you're a PC user, uh, I don't know if you're into DaVinci Resolve or Premiere, Premiere Pro, uh, but if you're a Mac user, particularly if you're using the new M1 Max, uh, I think um, Final Cut Pro is hard to beat. It's very simple, the timelines just streams, because if you're filming in bigger formats or bigger codecs, the, the, the scrolling and the the things can be choppy the playback can be choppy when you're watching it and the rendering can take a long time but uh, uh, i had no problems so far with this computer but you know camera equipment evolves so maybe on the next time uh, <laughs> the next camera i get maybe i get uh, some problem with uh, my computer and uh, need to upgrade <laughs> to to be able to uh, maintain some uh, good workflow because choppy editing and uh, also if the rendering takes like too long then then it becomes a stressful uh, too much of a stress because when I do these videos uh, I start with basically compiling all the footage I do and uh, then I be um, and making a rough cut of it and then I start to trim it down basically and uh, after when everything's on place this the video the sound the color grade then I start rendering it and the rendering can take time as well as when exporting it can take time and at that time I also start to screen it on uh, my uh, my big screen TV it's a real big one which is uh, has the colors uh, corrected and everything so i screen it on that one and basically go look for errors what can i do better is the color rate good how's the sound should i up the sound of my voice or i lower it or should i is the music too loud is the music too loud? so so at that time at that time there's a lot of going back and forth and uh, actually it can be up and then i have a video that i'm happy with i start uploading it and uh, there was actually one time, actually it's this, this video from the temples in Hua Hin, where I, in the morning I had pressed publish, the video was going up, and then I thought, hmm, maybe I should change the things. I quickly unpublished it and went into Final Cut again. And yeah, because yes, it was some of the translations of it, because I, I translated a few things 
she said there and the translation my interpreter of it was wrong because I, I wanted to really clarify that with her what she was saying and uh, and at that time I, I did not get a confirmation for all of her lines and that was the thing I got the, the final confirmation that, and I think this is this one because in Thailand it's uh, uh, seen as a sign of good fortune if you see a serpent you know a lizard or a snake in the in the wild and if you see it you say chok di which means uh, lucky it means good luck chok di and in this case she sees one and she say chok 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 because she says <laughs> chok di she say it so quickly so because that chok 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 and I had no idea what she was saying because I, I, I don't speak Thai. <laughs> I, I don't speak Thai. So uh, at, I, I, um, I, at first I thought, she, what is she saying? She says, look, 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 look. Or, and so that was uh, the thing that I was waiting for there. I, could have been something more, but uh, that was the main thing. What is she saying? And then I, I got the proper translation and uh, uh, I, I had to change the little thing make a new export a new upload and this is one of the 4k 60 frames per second videos so making a new upload there is uh, uh, taking a bit of time because uh, YouTube well you, YouTube is also making its own little compression on it and uh, doing uh, everything it does so um, uh, I, I was uh, set back there a couple of hours half a day for that little change uh, that's just uh, what's going on but it happens it uh, I'm sure it happened more times where I taken down a change I mean, yes there is one I, I'll get to that example later is in the uh, temples from uh, Phuket where I did a big change after a video had already started screening so yeah but so, so it happens I mean uh, and also I'm doing this uh, editing myself I do everything I don't have a if you're making a film maybe you go in you screen it for an audience first so the audience could say oh no that doesn't work you need to change that or, or something but I, I don't have that uh, uh, luxury of a test audience so I, I need to rely on my own uh, uh, wits about that and uh, well sometimes I may be off the mark sometimes hopefully most of the times I'm on the mark and and do do the best video that that I can but uh, sometimes I'm, I may be off the mark and uh, then I need to uh, change that obviously this is Halloween in Huayin 2019 uh, of course uh, the whole Halloween uh, celebration is uh, American from the beginning and it has uh, spread at least as the way we um, celebrate it with uh, dressing up and going for candy that is an American thing of it and Sweden we have something called All Hallows Eve which is uh, you basically pay respect for the dead and go to the cemeteries and light a candle uh, and that has nothing to do about dressing up or asking for candy and uh, sometimes those are uh, mixed up people think they are the same thing and uh, at least in Sweden where All Hallows Eve is quite a serious matter uh, it's uh, really not <laughs> it's really not the same thing and then in, uh, in Thailand, which is mostly a Buddhist country, uh, th th they don't have the All Hallows Eve uh, uh, tradition either. Uh, the Halloween that's there is mostly for having fun, dressing up and uh, enjoy a big party, which uh, of course uh, they enjoy as much uh, as often as they can. And uh, walking the... Uh, bigger walking streets in Hua Hin they've dressed up the streets the people are dressed up uh, it's a very joyful uh, uh, joyful uh, atmosphere there 
uh, e even though most of them are dressed up as something scary it's uh, it isn't particularly scary to go there uh, they don't do trick-or-treats though in Thailand I don't think they do that they just dress up for for the Halloween celebration there's no there is no trick-or-treating I knew I was going to <laughs> be waffling on there for a couple of hours so I have uh, some water prepared uh, first I was thinking okay maybe we should have some glass of wine or some beers but I'm thinking okay, I may sit here for a long while and, and the, I'll become very thirsty so it would have been it ended up in a rambling <laughs> rambling live stream if I was sitting uh, uh, drinking uh, wine for a couple of hours uh, then you would not get much of a commentary out of these uh, uh, these videos <laughs> But, uh, in my initial version of this video I was using the traditional Halloween theme obviously that was not uh, it, it, it got picked up and so I could uh, I, I did a change of uh, tune for that one also again one of the uh, times where I do a new export and new upload but at that time I had I did not publish it with the Halloween theme so it uh, it was a mistake that no one was bothered by. Here is uh, Lidinge, the island on which I grew up. My parents still live there, out in the south part of Lidinge, called Högberga. They live there, and uh, this video initially came about that I was going to go out to Lidinge and fly the DJI Mavic Air for the first time because I had never flown a drone before and I did not know of maybe I'll crash this the first thing I do maybe I maybe, maybe it's too difficult I don't want to crash into something or someone so what I did was that I went out to leading to Elvik and found a parking lot which was empty and I uh, put on the drone and started flying around and this shot actually, Elvik, this shot was from uh, my first drone flight ever and uh, uh, it didn't take long, I, I, I did some flying there and yeah, yeah I, I got the hang of it pretty, pretty easy there, I, it's, uh, it was fun, it was fun to fly a drone and uh, the Mavic Air has a great size to it it's not too big it's not too small it films in uh, 4k 60 if you like i do all my filming on the drone actually on 4k 24 because i do a lot of speed ramps in them anyway like this one and uh, yeah i i don't need more frames to do that because i'm gonna speed it up anyway so instead of speeding it up too much uh, i speed it up uh, reasonably Ah, here we are, back in Phuket. This was uh, from Phuket in uh, November 2019. A very lovely sunset we have there in, uh, in, in Big Buddha. And uh, when, when you're... Uh, showing these uh, different views of a country or Thailand or you know any country I mean you have to give a a balanced view of it uh, it's uh, because when I'm there I'm trying to see as much as possible I, I don't just go to the beach or drink beer <laughs> so uh, that's why I try even in these videos that I don't want it just to be beer bars or uh, beaches or temples. I, I want a mix of it, an, an equal mix uh, to be, uh, first of all, like having a, well, to give the viewers, the viewers, you who are watching, to give you a, 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 a 
a good uh, interpretation of uh, what it is to be in the area where I've been and what I have experienced so so that you can make up your own mind and say okay yeah well maybe I go there on something because if I just have a lot of videos of me drinking beer then I wouldn't uh, probably draw any new tourists to any location <laughs> because no one would see something and also I mean people would get tired of watching the videos because there's nothing to nothing new there so it's I, I, I try to in each video to put in something uh, new even if there's still like a temple or an abandoned building I, I try to tell a little new story about it every time or do it in a new way like here this water coming against us we're going in Thailand Thailand remember Thailand was filmed in 2019 I got the drone in uh, I think April 2020 so yes that drone shot in the beginning of flying over the water towards the sunset is from Sweden sunset Thailand drone flying over water Sweden and when you color grade them correctly and you mix them into each other it looks like we're going from the water up to the sunset and uh, this is a video about uh, the walking street Bangla Road which is the place to go if you are into discotheques or play video games or laser drum and this, uh, there are all kinds of uh, food and entertainment on this street so it, it is the place to to be if you are in uh, Patong but as many of these places I mean if, if you go there every day I would suppose you would get tired of it as well because uh, uh, we all need to see new things where we go to things but uh, it's uh, it's a tourist trap of course but uh, everyone's having a great time it, it is that kind of thing people are dancing in the streets music everywhere it's a uh, really a good mood there for some reason Siri started there and uh, <laughs> paused the video but uh, now we are on again and um, yeah, as you can see, the surf surfing thing there. There's a lot of uh, games and uh, uh, well, entertainment around this uh, road. It's an uh, entertainment road all, all through. And uh, but if you're not about being up, dancing all night. Uh, you can go there for a meal and you can of course leave early of course you don't have to be there until sun comes up that <laughs> you don't have to do that <laughs> once again a little uh, post credit sting there of a little small cockroach here now we are in uh, Sweden again in the fall of uh, 2020 and we are going to visit a abandoned subway station there was a uh, plan to make a uh, a, a, a little um, what should we call it well smaller city uh, a, a suburb they're gonna make a suburb here in Kymlinge and uh, Kymlinge or Kymlinge well depends on how you say it I guess uh, they were supposed to make a uh, suburb there but the plans uh, never came to be so uh, the station was even though it was uh, completed uh, almost it was never used and now I think if you go on the subway between uh, Hallonberg and Kista in 
the Stockholm subway system, you will uh, the train obviously will not stop at this station, but you will swish by it fast, and uh, you can look at it. It's uh, unfortunately it's closed, so you cannot go down on the platform. Uh, maybe you can if you uh, are with with a tourist group or something. If they, I don't know if they have some kind of uh, uh, walkings there, uh, if the train company itself do it. But as the general public, you you cannot enter the station. You have to look at it from the outside. And uh, also, this was a place which have uh, plenty of uh, ghost ghost stories about it. Uh, I think the most uh, famous one is the one I'm talking about there uh, about the ghostly train uh, Silver Pilen, the Silver Arrow, which is uh, a silver colored subway <laughs> train that is rumored to travel around in the subway system and uh, if you're unlucky maybe it stop where you're going and uh, uh, it, the train stops at your station and then you go in and, and uh, the, then the train will take you to this abandoned subway station and you will be well I don't know maybe be crazy or <laughs> something <laughs> there was a story about this about a woman going there and, and there were two endings to that story one of the endings said that uh, she died which of course isn't true because uh, how, how would we know about the story the second ending was that she was found later in that station walking around and she was scared out of her mind so it, it makes up for a good story for sure uh, I'm sure I, I'd like uh, to see maybe if someone can track down to where this story originates from uh, I know we we have some uh, you know these urban legends myths uh, there are some uh, researchers who go about and uh, finding those things out so yeah <laughs> maybe maybe they can uh, <laughs> track this story down and see what was uh, true about this when I did this video I, I actually did it on two separate times because this was when uh, the afternoons were very uh, they go dark very early I mean in the fall in Sweden in like October November uh, it get dark maybe around four o'clock in the afternoon it starts to get dark maybe around three or three thirty then it starts to get dark and then it just get darker so I had the, I had to go there in uh, in the weekends during the start of the day also I had to catch the Sun at its correct moment for this drone shots because if the drone uh, if the if the Sun was if I too late in the day then the station would be in shadow and uh, I would not get any good drone shots so I think for the drone shots I had to go up uh, like 7 in the morning to get there to get it exactly as the sun lights up the station because as you can see there are tall trees around it and they would block the sunlight if I had been uh, sleeping too long that day <laughs> so I, I, had, I had to wake up early that day but uh, the things we do for art right and uh, speaking of later fall yeah I think this is more like in the beginning of December even as Christmas shopping well there maybe there was uh, some easier form of shopping this year uh, last year but uh, at least the Christmas uh, decorations come up all around Stockholm and uh, Ah, that's it. Uh, in Sweden, well, in Scandinavia, I'd say, during this time of year, it gets uh, dark really early. 
so and also we don't have much light in the beginning of the days either or much sun for that matter it's mostly cloudy as you can see and uh, so w we try to lift our spirits <laughs> i guess by uh, putting up a lot of lights around so we're not completely surrounded in darkness even though it's dark from i don't know <laughs> many months there and um, for christmas of course there are some extra lights around as well as the decorations and i did this uh, video partly to show all international viewers on uh, how it uh, looks in uh, swedish traditions but also for uh, uh, my parents who uh, f during this pandemic were mostly sealed in their home they did not go out much or well they could be in their garden and go out in their neighborhood but they could not go in for for this for instance they cannot mingle in the city or do christmas shopping or go to restaurants and do those kind of things that maybe if you lived in the city you take for granted so this was actually a little way of showing them a little bit of uh, christmas spirit and uh, so, so that, that they could uh, get some a little taste of it at least in uh, and yeah it was appreciated they, they were they were happy to see it so i guess mission was completed And as we move into Christmas, uh, there is one more of Christmas celebration videos. Filmed in uh, December 2019 on uh, the iPhone XS Max. And oh, I used a really good gimbal for that one called the Movie Cinematic Robot. It's quite a long, <laughs> that's quite a mouthful. The movie cinematic, the, the free fly movie cinematic robot. That's the full title of it. And uh, it was a really good, really good uh, smartphone gimbal that uh, they, they don't do it anymore and they don't do a new version of it either. So that was really uh, uh, sad because if they did, they maybe more people will be using uh, smartphone gimbals but i guess th there are plenty to choose from either way so and uh, i guess they're good yeah th this was uh, the last time uh, they had this kind of christmas table there were no christmas table in 2020 and also it was here with my parents uh, they live close to this and of course this is in the Lidingö, the south part of Lidingö where they live they live actually in walking distance yes, about five minute walk from their home and you are at this uh, place is uh, you can go there for uh, seminars or as a um, hotel guest also you can do that and uh, but during Christmas they have a, a really delicious Christmas table and they do this thing that you can buy gifts uh, for uh, families uh, less fortunate so the the, the this uh, leading a Högberg gård the, the, this castle they collect all the gifts and then they give them to to the children in these families so that they can they can get a Christmas present and uh, and that that's a really uh, a good initiative of them and I, I, I really stand behind it and uh, so last year uh, even though they did not have this traditional Christmas table they did still collect the presents so uh, of course we donated presents to to them and, and I hope they brought some joy to some kids and now we have seen a traditional swedish christmas table yeah the thing with all these christmas tables is that we we eat too much so you go there and you eat and you eat and you eat for hours 
then you fall asleep. So, but uh, that is how we celebrate Christmas in Sweden for all you international viewers out there. And this was the last video of 2020. I did a little summarize of the year. Because that year was the year I, uh, I started this uh, channel. The first video, as we started with, was the uh, one with, uh, with the Songkran. It was... Uh, the first video that was published and I think it was published obviously before Songkran so I think it was like 13 or 14th of uh, April 2020 and then I been in during 2020 I had a lot of material from my trips filmed already so what I did was I did a lot of um, uh, what you call uh, summarizing I, I did a lot of editing of that footage and slowly putting it together but the footage was already filmed so the videos you've seen from Sweden yeah that those are made in uh, the summertime and in the autumn those were the videos from Sweden all the others are from traveling I made prior to that and uh, so I could keep a higher uh, publishing frequency in uh, 2020. So I think it was about one video every week for a while there. And uh, but in uh, now there are no new new travels, and I have really forced myself to be creative when it comes to thinking up new things to make and. Uh, I have filmed a few. Uh, there are two more uh, exploring videos and one cooking video. I filmed them. Uh, there will be the exploring video I hope will be up this week. Uh, so this uh, 40th video anniversary it was a special that I basically came to think about uh, during the week and I was like hmm, may maybe I, I can do that and I started going <laughs> looking at different streaming uh, uh, pro software and uh, methods uh, yesterday yeah in <laughs> and now today uh, Monday evening we we're, we're doing it so it was that a really short thing because I I was thinking, yeah, I always like those, you know, kind of audio commentaries, like just in, in the movies, uh, when you rent a DVD or Blu-ray, and you can like switch on an alternative track to listen to the filmmaker, the director and the actors sometimes to talk about the production of it and think, oh, wow, that, that have been cool to make an audio commentary sometime. And uh, so I said, yeah, why not make a visual uh, audio commentary a visual commentary and that is what we're doing now and this is hiring a slot and i still think this is the video that i'm most maybe happy with in the end how it came out i think it's it came out exactly as i had envisioned it this is a video that i <coughs> because i've been to hiring a lot so i know the grounds i know the castle so I, I could have a vision already before filming even, okay, this is going to look like this. And I was there, uh, I think, first I was there to make some general shots of the uh, area around it. I was there to make uh, some video of me inside of the castle. And uh, I was there with the drone uh, one time. Uh, actually it was early Christmas morning so this shot this this was early Christmas morning and it's been cold night so we had like a frost frost everywhere also me speaking was one time so I had actually did go out 
the general pictures, me speaking, me inside the castle, and drone shots. That was one. And then the fifth and final time visiting there was with uh, the uh, videos from inside the room. Uh, which will come to later in this video was the video comments in in in, in uh, spending the night there and me not uh, seeing any ghosts and th that hooks back to a little bit of what i talked about before uh, that i i've never seen any ghosts myself i'm very interested in the paranormal i love horror films of course uh, <clears throat> but I, i've never seen a ghost uh, I want to believe in them, but until I've seen one, it's difficult to me to say that I, I, I believe. I cannot believe until I have seen it, but also I don't rule it out. So, but since I've been to now a few, quite a few haunted, supposedly haunted places, and I've not felt anything, and this room was called the Sara Leander Suite and it's said to be the most haunted room in in Herringe Slot. And nothing happened. And it was uh, well, I don't know if it's an anticlimax or if it's uh, a disappointment <laughs> or if it's a relief. <laughs> I don't know. Um uh, Actually, I'm not really sure about that, but I would like to um, uh, go there with maybe someone who is able to sense these things. Maybe get that person to conjure up some kind of activity there. Uh, yeah, I'd like to do that. I'd like to join a seance or something uh, film it of course because if it's not on camera it didn't happen as you know and um, well it's, so it's become a little bit of a gag me going to haunted places but i've never seen anything so what i did with this one that's that okay i'm gonna go here and I'm gonna film it is as if i don't see anything so uh, but in case <laughs> we would feel something there then we could make a film about that so that was the fifth uh filming day of this place that is basically was going to determine how the video was going to be because if we were going to uh find something paranormal then it would be about that and if we didn't well it would be the video you're watching now <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> actually feel a bit sore in the throat now for speaking for uh, let's see oh wow we're up in almost uh, <laughs> one hour 40 minutes on speaking for 40 yeah anyway uh i'm not sure if we're up to video 40 yet uh, we, we, we will we will know when we're there <laughs> we will know for sure and uh so we got the room about uh one in the afternoon and as I said, uh, this was filmed in the beginning of January. The, the fifth filming was in beginning of January, this one. And uh, we did this filming about in the midday, when it was as light as possible. And uh, uh, obviously uh, this was filmed in a uh, bright room. And uh, we did a film for about, I think the entire sequence we filmed for six minutes. And we had uh, entry points where the ghost would appear and when it would go back. And then in the editing, I, I make it like it's uh, the ghost standing over me for the entire night. This ghost is uh, played by my friend Rebecca, uh, who I had hoped would be sensitive for 
paranormal activity so that she maybe uh, would say when we were walking around the castle that oh i feel something but no she did not feel anything either <laughs> but in this case because so many talk about feeling something in herring and slot and give accounts about it i think maybe just me and obviously rebecca are not sus susceptible to it uh, maybe some medium watch this and, and can help me to open it up uh, i don't know <laughs> so, so that was um, the, the, the ending of uh, of of uh, herring and slot and also the the ghost sequence uh, uh, that would there was a lot of editing in that a lot of color grading and having layers of uh, video for the ghost because the ghost was going to be see-through to a certain extent but not uh, but you should still see the ghost and also because it was during the day as she was walking in and walking out she would cast shadows so i had to paint out those shadows as well in uh, in that sequence so that sequence took a lot of time and also to make the timing right the clock right and everything uh, but, but uh, it's uh, i'm happy the way it came out with and i feel this video it's this is the one that came out exactly as i had it in my mind before doing it this video temples in phuket uh, did not come out the way I had uh, envisioned it. Uh, it's actually, I, I had the, the images we were watching, yes, they came out as I had to, but the, at first I had a different sound mix. I started off with some music, uh, the second track, uh, with some music that I did not use before, it was more of an upbeat, some kind of more like, uh, you know, singer. Uh, and I put this track there. Yeah, it was a like, like rapping R&B. And as I put the track there, I said, oh, I'm not sure about this. Doesn't feel really right for, for the images and for the subject matter. And... Um, but I said, okay, but I will never know unless I try. I mean, I, I have to give the track the benefit of a doubt a little. So uh, when it uh, premiered later, I published and everything fine. And I got a comment from a friend in Thailand. I said, oh, may I have a little feedback and I said yeah sure it's it's um, it's not big but it's about the music yeah it was during this segment it was a uh, little music there I was like oh, yes I know what you're talking about I know what you're talking about okay and she said well, maybe it's just me but that felt a little off and I said yeah I had that feeling when I did it and it was a little off okay and then there was another thai friend who said there is a song at this clip and she sent me a timestamp as i was like yep yeah, i know it so I was like, okay uh, this is obviously hitting the wrong note uh, uh so i i i think i made it uh, i took it away it was not public anymore it was still there i had sort of had to evaluate it and i asked a few other and one said also that yeah there was something with the music uh, no one was offended by it but it was just wrong it didn't feel the mood of it it was it was wrong and uh, and and there was one who who did not no no it was good she had no problem with it at all uh but i was thinking okay i, I get this feedback and uh, i have to go back to the drawing board so not 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 that back uh, i just went into the editing took out that song then i was like okay um i maybe can do something with the music so i looked at some more tracks and the, remixed the beginning of it and, and some of the transitions to uh, wh wh where the music is uh, now 
and uh, I did put it up again uh, I shared it with uh, with the people who who had comments on this before and uh, before before it was it was like shareable by link it was not public uh, big public yet it was just shareable and these people yeah yeah, yeah they looked and said like, yes yeah much better now it works and even though I have music that feels a little there's a rhythm it there's a tempo there's not the singing and even in the end of it it's like a really like a good almost electronic beat but no that was no problem they, they really liked particularly the ending some of them said that they really liked the ending uh, and the benefit that yeah good now I've made uh, made it the way it should be and then I uh, hit uh, publish uh, for everyone and that's the video that you can see on YouTube today and uh, yeah that, that was a little thing there um, but it was good good I'm very I was very grateful for the people who gave me feedback there that they didn't just sit quiet and think oh that was bad or something like that they said oh there is something here and I was like ah and I could uh, do something about it and which make in the end that it turned out actually better than I did uh, from the beginning and uh, now I, I'm really happy with it it's also one of the videos filmed in uh, 60 frames per second 4k so if you have a good streaming device at home <laughs> and a good TV uh, please watch it in 60 frames 4k that's that's the way it's intended yeah the, this was during the day I there was uh, a one coming up later where it's in the evening and uh, the really lovely sunset from Big Buddha coming up later But it's, um, this was how the videos which are based on uh, my trips look. There are pictures and there are texts or sometimes voiceover. But since I cannot put myself into that the same way I put myself into the London video. Uh, because I cannot find this kind of nature or backgrounds around here. That is why the Thailand videos are not uh, uh, with me in them, in front of the camera. Uh, but next time I go, next time I go to Thailand, I will be in the front too. <laughs> I promise you that. Well, there's so many beautiful temples there. So if you're into temples, uh, well, then I'm sure you've already been traveling around there in Thailand to see <laughs> now we're having another cooking video there <laughs> this is also an example the Images with me speaking was filmed uh, the day this one went up. So I think it's the beginning of, I don't know, January or February. I think it's February. This may be gone up in February. Me speaking February, the cooking and the hands was lost. Uh, it was May 2020, I think. Uh, because I did also, the, I did this cooking video and uh, at that time, I did not know I would put myself in them so much so I um, had to uh, uh, put my uh, self in there so, so those things I filmed and I also had to think about matching the lights matching the color grade uh, be sure that I film it during the same time of day to get the correct light from the windows I am um, I'm still very dependent on natural light sources because I don't own any big lights myself but uh, I guess if I'm going to still 
keep doing this in my kitchen maybe I should get some more lighting so uh, I, I can get some good uh, good lights there and see more of it and uh, well, this meat is really good so, I mean if you are a meat eater uh, which I am uh, I can wholeheartedly recommend that you do this uh, roast it takes many hours but it's uh, it's really worth it. It's really worth it in the end. It's one of the most uh, tender ones I've, I've tasted. <laughs> so it actually took. Uh, I don't think. I think it should take about three or four hours in the oven when it's on sixty. Of course, you can do it quicker if you're really hungry, but. Uh, to get these results, I suggest that you do it uh, f for a longer, longer period on uh, lower heat. Also, uh, for, for long, uh, I, I did not you do much cooking before, but uh, now I, I started to to really enjoy. I started to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, see there. Looks perfectly red. Perfectly red, no blood coming out. Mm. Just as it should be. Yeah, here. There was an abandoned hotel in Phuket. At first I found videos on YouTube of this place, but they claimed it was a hotel in Kaolak which was hit by the tsunami. So those videos, even though they had images of this place, they made a video about it being something else. So yeah, fake news obviously. And I found this by chance. Uh, because I was googling <laughs> something like haunted places or abandoned places Phuket this is filmed November 2019 and uh, I did find this uh, and I said oh, wait those I recognize this and then I compared it to to those videos I found before and uh, then I went there uh, I, I found it, I went there and it was re uh, it was amazing and uh, you could walk around in it, it was not uh, dangerous in any kind, uh, you could walk around, you could, uh, uh, but you have to mind your steps, you don't fall down an elevator shaft or something <laughs> that, that. and uh, there are no ghost stories connected to this place, but I did something in the editing. I'm gonna show you here. I'm gonna show you here. Here, in, uh, in that uh, passage, in that corridor, for a couple of frames, you actually see this. You see a, uh, one, I think it's like two or three frames of a, demonic entity well that was put in by me then of course it was not uh, f for real but uh, it, it became a little extra thing there to put in <laughs> so i did that mostly for fun even though there are no ghosts in in that place i did go and uh, talk to uh, some of the uh, uh, people working near there and um, th they ju just to ask them about first of all is it safe to walk in there and uh, of course getting the lowdown if, if there are ghost stories there if there are anything they could tell me but uh, there were there was no uh, rumors about anything paranormal but there had been a suicide by hanging uh, just a month prior to me visiting and uh, 
Uh, I think it was in the se second building. They, they, they said which building? I think it's second floor in the in second building. And uh, uh, knowing that, of course, you think that it ha it has a little, you know, scary or moody vibe over it. But uh, that apart, it it was a nice stroll. I, I did go there two days. I was there for the first day. I was filming most of, of all the things you see around the uh, the hotel, and yeah, yeah, second second building during fall of two thousand nineteen. And on the second day I go there, I was there for uh, uh, for the evening because I wanted the sunset from the roof. And you, you can walk up. You can walk up on uh, on on the top of the building, and you get a really wonderful view of uh, Nyharn Beach. And, uh, and now, now we get into it, actually. <coughs> Once again, plenty of graffiti. Yes, these shots are from uh, from the second day. And as uh, <clears throat> people know who are in more uh, countries to the south, uh, closer to the, to the equator, the sun goes down really quick. So you have a small window there to get this sunset. And as the sun goes down, it, it gets dark pretty quick. And I was on top of the building and I had to get down there. And as I went down, it was still not dark outside, it's still little, you can get some kind of daylight in, but there were like whoosh, flattering around, I was like, whoa, what was that? And of course, bats. The bats live down the elevator shafts, and when the dark comes, they fly up, because that's nighttime, and that's when they live. So, I got some images of bats there, but... Uh, I quickly left the building after that. <laughs> then I had enough. Okay, now we're done. I'm not gonna stand here in the darkness with bats. I left. Um, now I heard. Uh, I think it's someone who posted something about this that this was being torn down now. That they are going to. There is a new new owner now, and they they took this away to build a new hotel <coughs> sorry so uh, I think on my next visit uh, hopefully there, there is something new there. M maybe I can stay there one night uh, to check it out Stockholm yes Swedish winter we do have uh, winters here uh, sometimes. Uh, the last couple of years have been not much winter, but this year we did have a quite good winter. We had uh, uh, some good snow, as you can see, ice, people walking on the, uh, the lakes and the sea. And um, yeah, just, just a general good time. This was, uh, I was trying out a new, um, uh, what's it called, uh, color profile. Even though I'm filming on the Sony a7 III, uh, the color profile is, uh, you key it in yourself, but uh, it was uh, to uh, emulate the ones of the uh, Cine S, uh, S Cinetone color, S Cinetone, yeah, from uh, the Sony a7s3 and uh, fx6 uh, so I basically wanted to try that uh, color profile I have used it once in uh, these vlogs uh, but 
I don't mind doing coloring. I think it's part of the process of making making a, a video, making the feel of it. Uh, how can we, you know, uh, do it uh, a little uh, uh, moodier or happier? Or because when you watch a film, the color makes bigger impression that maybe you think about that. I have started to think about this since I started to color grade. Because now I see I see a film and then you see things like, you know, a red shirt or a blue sky. And I think, okay, the sky is not really realistically blue in this film. It's more like a cyanic blue or, a, you know, grayish blue or whitish blue. And uh, as soon as you start thinking about these things, like, ah, oh, this looks like that and this looks like that. And then you say, okay, this is the kind of color grade they make for this film, for this series. So now it's always, when I start seeing a film, it's like, okay, you see the sky, you see things there. And say, like, okay, yeah, oh, that red shirt is sort of a brown. Then we're going for a brownish, uh, teal and orange look in this uh, particular product. Uh, so yeah, this is... <laughs> Someone said they found a lost cat and put up a picture of a badger. <laughs> that is actually, um, I think, my favorite post-credits <laughs> post -credits thing of, of these. And here is from the um, really magic uh, sunset in Phuket. It's also uh, filmed in um, 60 frames per second as all of these Thai videos, but here I really wanted to go down to 24 to use the slow motion as much as possible. Uh, on this one I did a slight color grade, but the colors were so beautiful and so vibrant in in the actual uh, natural the way they came so i just had to you know adjust contrast a little bit and uh, and and some some contrast and some uh, shadows and stuff but apart from this, that uh, this is i think as beautiful a sunset can look uh, filmed on, on on a mobile phone at least uh, yeah, yeah. When I see this, I, I kind of wish that I had my uh, Sony camera with me on that particular trip. I did a lot of. I brought a camera, but at that time I did not do so much filming on it. I, I did mostly photographs and did all the filming on my iPhone. But uh, so it uh, was when I started this channel and started doing content for. Uh, uh, and filming in Sweden, I was okay. Well, I have a good camera that also makes great video. Well, why don't I use it more? And now I use it uh, always. That's, that's the thing I use. I don't use the iPhone anymore for for video. In the 60 frames per second raw material on this, there is a, a, a scene over lights coming, and there is one light up in the sky that goes. First I thought it was a reflection, but it wasn't. It was uh, something that moved on its own. It was visible in the raw material from the uh, 60 frames per second version of it. So I don't think you see it now. I'm not sure you will see it in the 24 frames per second version on YouTube. But in the raw material, there is some light going like, like some different thing there. And it's not an airplane. It's could be a drone, but since it's unidentified, it is a UFO. <laughs> it's an identified flying object. It's not an alien, for sure, but it's unidentified. So that's my UFO experience. I'm happy I got that in here too. <laughs> now, for this year, Songkran was, was cancelled again, of course. 
uh, and I wanted to make an upbeat celebration of Songkran, of the memories for Songkran, and um, starting off with the video I've taken uh, from my first trip to Thailand, Koh Samui, which I told you about before, uh, doing the um, uh, Songkran celebration. So this was the also iPhone 6s Plus 4K. I think it was uh, 29.9 frames per second. So this one is also in that native format, but it's pretty close to 24. So it's uh, it's not so much different. But yeah, that was basically the um, intent with these videos. That and since I had three. Songkran experiences Samui, Phuket and Pattaya it was important for me to make uh, them uh, each like three days of Songkran as it is in Thailand Songkran is 13th of April 14th and 15th of April so there are, there are three days so I said okay since there are three days of celebrations in Thailand of three official days, some people celebrate a lot more than that. But since there are three official days and I have three different experiences of this, I should make three days of Songkran. I should make this a uh, celebration to, of Songkran and uh, that, that we will have it back. So, so I, I, these are more like a short experience, action filled, uh, upbeat music. Uh, they're not supposed to be a downer. They're really nice, and uh, also this one, we, the one we saw in the beginning, which featured some of the images from this. Uh, the color grade in that one was more grayish. It was so somber because even though it was about Songkran, it was about it being cancelled. It's more like okay, that was a memory, a memory we cannot celebrate this year. So it has a little. Yeah, but in, in, it will become better in the end, but as of now, we stay home. In this video, there's a new color grade, it's much more colorful, music obviously very upbeat, and uh, the editing is, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with it. It's uh, really fast moving, uh, good pace, and uh, also about showing people how fun, how fun this is. And how much fun you can have when you celebrate this and I really hope I can be back there for 2021 <laughs> yeah well now we, we are in almost two hours ten minutes exactly two hours eight minutes we are talking about this. So yeah, it's been a lo long hair. I drank a lot of water. I will have to run to the bathroom as soon as this is over, unless I make a quick <laughs> run to the bathroom during this video. But I, I don't think we have so many left now. I, I think we are getting closer to the end. And And as you can see, all the on these uh, water festival celebration, it's uh, everyone is in on it. You know, you can throw water at everybody, and they throw at you. Sometimes they put ice in the water. It get really cold. It's uh, as you can see here. There's a bucket of water they're throwing out of some people in the van, and um, it is some. Um, experience that I recommend to everyone. I, I know many people don't like throwing water. They, they, they want to keep away from it. Maybe it's because they've done it all their life or something. But for me, who've done it now, I've done it 19... Uh, 90, uh, what was it? No. <laughs> 2017 and uh, 2019. Uh, so, and I did it uh, in two locations, 2019. 
and uh, so I'm not tired of it yet. I can do it again. Maybe 2021 will will I do it again in some locations, and uh, then we'll see if I do it again later on. And, but uh, I think as for now, I I at least want to do it one more time. Once again, a drone shot in a video from 2019. Yeah, that water when you hear the airplane was from uh, taken uh, last summer in Sweden. But everything else is Thailand. This is Pattaya. They have uh, a whole week of Songkran Water Festival. In uh, on the, I think it's uh, the 18th or 19th, they have this uh, big uh, uh, celebration, and uh, people go there from all over Thailand. To April 19, yeah, April 19. People go all over Thailand to be in this big final. And uh, once again, it's all about happy and celebration of the new year. The throwing of water, it is a symbol of uh, uh, rejoicing in uh, that the what's it called rain season starts. Because it's always hot in Thailand, a lot of dry earth, so the, the rain is good. So throwing a little water is both for good luck and for uh, wishing a, a uh, prosperous uh, year. It's the Thai New Year, song, song crown. And yeah, so many people, so much, uh, everyone on... Uh, everywhere and uh, I can really understand uh, they had to have it cancelled this year because everyone uh, in a crowded place with the throwing water that, that would have not been good that would have been a real problem for them especially since I hear Thailand is planning to open on 1st of July they want to open Phuket and uh, yeah we'll we keep our fingers crossed that they can and that they, they can give out the virus, uh, the vaccine, so the virus go away. I mean, we, we keep doing vaccine all over the world right now and uh, uh, I'm, I'm getting my shot this week. Today, today is Monday, uh, Thursday. I'll be, I'll be getting mine. Uh, but probably need two but at least we're getting there the world will be back more abandoned places this is from uh, Stockholm in Södermalm we, we have them and uh, yeah, yeah, they're growing a lot of the, there are a lot of uh, small uh, buildings around this where people can grow their own own vegetables. Well, that is um, yeah, the gardening on the tracks. To be able to have your own little piece of land in the city to grow your own uh, vegetables, that is a really nice thing. I don't have it, but uh, uh, I'm not much into growing uh, vegetables. Uh, I, I, I don't think I could do that. I'm more into this. I'm more into creating videos than creating uh, vegetables. <laughs> so, I think there's a little Easter egg here if you look ever so slightly you could see um, some kind of eyes looking at you when you look in there uh, that was a digital effect of course uh, there were no uh, ghosts hiding in there this one was also filmed uh, actually on three days uh, the tunnel were blocked so first day we did it with, with the garden on the tracks and on the second 
on the other side of the tunnel uh, we have this wasteland which is not as, uh, as nice as the garden on the tracks but uh, yeah, it looks like a suspicious place and on the third day I went there with uh, the drone to get some extra shots which are incorporated in uh, in this Yeah, here you can see those small houses where you can have your own little garden. You cannot live in those houses. I don't think you even can spend the night there. They're more like a gardening shed. You, you put your, your, your equipment there. And, uh, and then you have the little piece of land where you can grow, grow your own things. And there we have some growing, uh, some drone shots there. And I think, I do actually think we are at video 139 now. No, not 130, I mean video 39. <laughs> Oh, I need to have some air also. I've been talking, talking, and oh, I need to catch the breath. Yes. This is, I think, video 140. Video 40. <laughs> also, as of now, the last video I have from Thailand. There is one filmed for a Thai celebration called Loi Kathong, which was in... Uh, I filmed it in November because they had that uh, loss in 2019. Last year Loi Kathong was on the same day as Halloween and I already had a Halloween video on that day. So I was thinking, okay, I put Loi Thong in 2021 instead. So yes, there is one Thai video filmed and somewhat edited already. So that's one waiting until, uh, well, I guess uh, November, October, November sometime when, when they have Loi Thong this year. So this is from my road trip going from Phuket, going along the coast and uh, seeing some sights on the way and um, eventually up to Kaolak and yeah so I do have from, from, from the earlier from my first visit in uh, Hua Hin I have a video from a temple inside of a cave um, not sure about the quality about that, but I had an edit of it of the ones I mentioned before for you know friends and family. So there is an edit of the temple in the cave, but um, uh, maybe that one will come in the summer or something if I can make something good of it. If the quality holds, if it's not too you know too much grain in the dark or something because that was filmed with the iPhone 8 so it did not have the same uh, capability of handling uh, uh, dark scenes as uh, newer equipment so yeah but apart from that I think uh, this is um, the last thing we will see of Thailand until next trip which I hope will be, well, could it be the end of this year or maybe a next Sun Crown? We, well, we shall see. Also, when portraying this uh, monument, I wanted to be, you know, respectful about that and uh, tell the story about the uh, tsunami with a somber soundtrack and uh, information uh, and not wanting to uh, uh, make it uh, uh, you know like 
some big action piece or something like that. Uh, it's uh, I wanted to keep it low key. And after the monument, we go up in the sky, and the sky goes down to the waterfall and the more upbeat music where we have. This was a really nice waterfall in the nearby uh, on, the, on my way back to Phuket. There are many waterfalls there. I, this is, I think, the second one I have visited, but there are so many, so many beautiful. So maybe I should make that little promise now, because now I've done the temples, I feel. I've done the temples on the places I've been. So maybe to experience more waterfall and nature. Yeah. Maybe that would be what's up next in uh, the future future visits and by that it's uh, I think we are up at video 40 now the next video will be from an abandoned uh, uh, town outside Stockholm a ghost town and hopefully up Wednesday Maybe, maybe Wednesday, maybe Thursday, but I have a, a cut of it that works, so yeah. Now we'll see what it does now. Uh, we don't, don't, don't. And I will be going to this. Now, that was all my 40 videos. And I've been talking about them now for <laughs> 2 hours 22 minutes. I feel my throat is a bit sore now. I really need to run to the bathroom because I've been drinking too much water. <laughs> so uh, with that said, thank you so much for watching. All of you, I, I see <laughs> that there are two viewers still here. Thank you. Thank you for hanging in there to the bitter end. And uh, uh, see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.